Hey everybody, welcome to Silver Gear. Today I'm talking about Nikkor's R25 from their new R series. Uh, that come with this rechargeable dock, or cradle as you can call it. I'll be showing you the user interface and a couple of features about the light and the charging system and the special battery it comes with, this NL188DW. Um, and I've got another accessory from Nikkor too that goes great with this, so stick around. All right, well let's get into the user interface real quick. So just to look at the light a little bit here, we have a main tactical switch, a forward tactical. We have this lever, uh, metal lever depressor, and we've also got a bezel connection that we're working with. So um, overall, the R25 has two modes, and so it kind of gets into semantics how you want to talk about um, the operations. But I would say this has a primary mode and the secondary mode, which is the strobe ready mode. Uh, to start the light off, you just turn the light on. Um, so this is kind of the primary mode, and you use the metal lever to cycle through the different levels. Um, or if you are in one of the profiles, which I'll get into, uh, has strobe access. So that's the primary mode. The secondary mode um, is the strobe ready mode. So anytime you need the strobe, you just press and hold the mode button. So Click and hold, and it goes off. You can be in the primary mode, and you click and hold the mode button, and it activates the strobe. But the tricky part is that it has a constant on strobe, so it's kind of a third mode as well. What's other? What also is unique too is it'll remember that mode. So I just did a normal on-off operations. So within the primary mode, there are three different profiles, which I like to call. So it just means what different levels you have readily accessible to you. You may have a particular niche job, you may be working in law enforcement, you may be in a tactical situation or just a general user. So they have three different profiles for that. Um, and I'll show you how to switch between the profiles. I'm currently in the, the general user mode, which has access to, sorry, all of the different uh, levels. So I have, that was high, this is low, mid, and high. And it goes back down to low. If I wanna switch into the tactical mode, so there's only um, one way to go through the profiles, you can't go forwards or backwards, you loosen the bezel connection, or the tail cap, whichever works. You hold the mode button, and click and hold it, and then you tighten the head again. And the light will blink to indicate which profile it has selected. Profile number one is the tactical mode, which means that you have high available and you have strobe available. And that was just with one little click. The normal mode cycling is, um, has strobe in it. So, that's, so it's still kind of a primary mode, but it has a typically hidden mode right along with it. So um, we'll do that again. We'll go to the next mode. We'll loosen the bezel connection. Click and hold the mode button and we'll tighten the bezel and blink twice. And that's for the law enforcement mode, quotes. And that means we have high and a low, I think. It may be a mid and a low, I forget which ones. But it has um, two different levels. And then the general mode is the one I started off with. And to show you the other way, you can loosen the tail cap press and hold the mode, and then we can tighten the rest. And it blinked three times. I found you don't actually have to hold the mode after you've tightened it. It'll still um, switch the new profile. So that's how you switch the profiles. All right, well next let's talk about the charging system this comes with. So it comes with this cradle, and it has these two contact points that it uses to charge the light. And um, all you have to do is align those two together. Um, and so it's pretty easy, you just kind of get it close and um, it fits right in here and there's these notches that receive the knurling around the bezel and these clips grab onto it and you see the blue light blinking which means it's charging. Blue light will keep blinking as it's charging and when it finishes it'll be a constant on so that's something to be aware of if you're putting this by your um, bed stand, your nightstand that this will pretty much always be on. I also just wanted to show you these grabbing arms that they actually have a mechanical pin and spring in there 
that um, give this uh, the ability to open and close without just being a piece of plastic bending. Just showing you a little bit more about the cradle. It has this barrel connection. Um, comes with two different options. You have a wall outlet that you can plug in and also comes with a car charger that you can use. So that's nice that it just comes right with that. It's, here's the back of the charger. It has the input voltage plus the amperage that's coming in and the output to the lights. All right, well, if we're gonna be talking about the R25, we definitely have to talk about this new battery. Um, I'm not a battery expert, but I just wanted to show you guys what it looked like. This NL188DW. So this is unique just for the R25 right now. They may be utilizing this in other R series type lights. Um, but this is the only battery that can be charged in, um, in the R25. It's got two different contact points at the top, you know, at the positive end, I guess. Um, just only one at the bottom. And so that's what's um, charged inside the light. Nikkor uh, did tell me that you can charge this battery in their chargers. Um, I only have one uh, simple little charger from them, the UM10, um, but this battery doesn't fit in it. It's a little too long. And as you can see, there's actually um, a pronounced height difference. So despite having the um, specialized battery, you can still put regular batteries into the R25. And I'll just demonstrate that real quick. And so, yeah, it comes with a specialized battery, but you can still bring in your favorite 18650s into this light and you'll still be fine. Just wanted to show you the bezel end here. This is the top part of the light. You can see there's a little tiny pin um, up there that would make contact with that secondary contact on the NL188DW. All right, so just looking back at the light here, um, if you're like me, you like to have all your accessories um, available to you, but what about putting it back in the charger? Well, it, fortunately it does fit back in there. So you can have your, your tactical ring, you can have your clip and you can have your lanyard on there. Still fits in the cradle just fine. Um, I did notice that you have to have the clip in this position for this to work because the contact points are behind the light. Um, also notice that the lanyard can only connect to the tactical ring because there happens to not be any real um, protection fins on the back here, which is nice because it makes these buttons really accessible and it's great for personal security, but there's not really a loop up here to put your lanyard on. And speaking of accessories, it also comes with a handy holster here with all of the extras on here. It still fits in the holster pretty well. It has a nice snug fit. The Velcro comes down and can line up. There's a nice area of um, receiving Velcro and can put a lot of nice pressure on the top of the light to keep it snug. So I'm not too worried about that leaving. It also has three points of connection like their standard holsters do. It has a Velcro over your belt, just a grab and go. Or if you're going out for um, a planned outing, you can just put it right through there or uh, you can just hook it to a D-ring and uh, attach it to a bag or to your belt loop like that. The Nikkor also has some extra accessories you can get. And on the side of the box here, you can see there's some tactical switches and lanyards and stuff. And also this cool holster here, which I requested to demo and I have it here today to show you. This is the NTH30B, that's a mouthful. But anyways, this is the optional uh, tactical holster. It's a molded plastic. It has room for a spare battery and for the light. This was released um, with the P20 light, but it's the same basic body um, for the R25. So it is also compatible with this um, great little accessory. Runs about $15, $16 right now, US dollars. Um, it, it works just as you would think it does. Um, has a cutout for the light, which is great uh, because you can actually attach this to your belt and have it be a, a waist high light. So if you attach it to your belt this way, there's a button right over here that you push and you depress that and you can spin it. And so it's great for having something um, below the belt as well um, in case you don't think you're um, going to be able to use a headlamp. The clip is a little bit um, flimsy for me. I, I, I think if you were looking for something for everyday use, this, this might not be quite um, sturdy enough, but I haven't, I haven't 
had a need to use it all day long, so I can't verify um, how long that would hold up for. Um, the battery compartment is pretty nifty. Uh, it's pretty easy to slide this out. So for those who are really in a tactical situation and need a spare battery really, really quickly, that's really pretty easy operation. Um, it's just a piece of plastic there that pushes out onto the light, onto the battery, I'm sorry. Um, but that means that it's a little bit loose, I think, if you're really going on a jog or um, a hike and you're getting up, sitting down, um, this may kind of slip out a little bit. But anyways, I had lots of fun um, playing with this and I think for the price, this is a great option for those looking for an alternative um, uh, hands-free option. All right, well, that's it for now. Thanks for stopping by and watching my quick review on the Nikkor R25. For a full review, check out my WordPress blog at civilgear.wordpress.com. Also, you're welcome to stick around and uh, browse my YouTube channel for more flashlight reviews and other gear reviews like this. Uh, feel free to um, leave a comment below and I'll see you next time.